Hey everybody, this is Slahetka, and I'm about to tell you the story behind the song for Lifeboat. So Lifeboat started with a title. You know, I had um, been compiling a bunch of themes, non sequitur lyrics, and titles in my phone, and uh, Lifeboat obviously being one of them. And when I took the idea to my good friend Tim Jones, uh, he immediately latched onto it. And, you know, this song is so special to me because... Um, Tim is, is, is an old dear friend and I actually met him within the first month of moving to Los Angeles back between 2005 and 2006. We were both part of the same scene um, which was focused around this great club in Hollywood called Hotel Cafe. And at the time I was in a band called the North Star Session and Tim, um, it was right before he started a great band called the Truth and Salvage Company, but he was doing a lot of you know solo artist shows, but he was also helping with um, some of the booking at that venue. And he actually booked us our first show at Hotel Cafe, and we became fast friends. But the funny thing is, it took us you know 12 years of being friends before we finally wrote a song together. You know, Tim um, moved to Nashville about seven to eight years ago, and he was also one of the the major voices in. Um, you know, really kind of getting me to move to Nashville from Los Angeles. And we wrote this song June of 2017, so that was like the first summer that I was uh, in Nashville after moving here. And, you know, I, I threw out the uh, Lifeboat title him and kind of talked to him about um, the concept behind it. And he immediately latched onto it, and we wrote the song probably within an hour or so. And, um, you know, it's just that idea of like, uh, well, first off, you know, I think no matter who you are, where you are in life, we all have a lifeboat or we all have kind of like a crutch or we have that like life support entity that um, is good. But at some point, you know, we all have to kind of shed that to keep moving on and keep progressing in life and to keep, you know, pushing ourselves and, and getting further, further, further down the road. Um, and, you know, for this song, it's also it's really respecting and honoring where you've been and honoring and respecting where you've come, you know? And so for us, we just really tapped into that idea of like age and wonder of both living in Los Angeles for a, a really majestic time, you know? Um, and so we, we both had similar experiences, similar friends, um, similar venues we played, similar tour routes, like the whole thing. So we immediately just combined forces and uh, really tried to make as much of a visual concept with the lyrics of the song because um, we wanted to tap into like the grit, the beauty, the struggles and all of the, you know, everything that comes with living in Los Angeles. Um, but it doesn't just have to be Los Angeles. It could be, you know, any town or city you've ever lived in or any type of love or struggle you've ever gone through. That's what uh, this song is in a nutshell. guys play your regular beat and Jimmy and I still do a triplet the second time so sorry. That sounds pretty cool. Piano sounds you know, kind of right. Piano can work too. But we'll try it. Um, I came from the country and tried to make it work. Down the into the empty ocean. 
So this is the acoustic guitar that I used for all the basic tracking on this song. Um, it's fitting that uh, it was this one because uh, I got this when I was still living in California. I bought it before I moved to Los Angeles. I was living in San Diego for four years. And this is, um, it's either like a 2002 or 2003 Martin OM28V. And it's part of their vintage reissue series. Um, it's what they call their pre-war era guitars. Pre-war meaning pre-war war two. So it's got a slightly wider neck, um, soft V profile on the back. It's just so comfortable and it's great for, for finger picking and just, it's got such a big sound for a smaller body guitar. So for like lifeboat, instrumental section in the middle of the song. So pretty much after I recorded the uh, acoustics, because I cut the acoustic and the vocal live, we did all the basic tracking live. Um, once we got the tracks we needed, uh, I went back in. Um, there was a gorgeous 1951 Telecaster at Blackbird Studio A, where we recorded the entire record. And I went in and just put a really fun counterpoint electric guitar part on there. You know, when I was cutting the song, um, a lot of other songs as reference, uh, that I was thinking about were, um, there's a great Joe Walsh song called Tomorrow um, off of the uh, Ser Just Seriously Folks album. Um, sorry, it's called But Seriously Folks. Um, that was something I had in my head, plus like the Eagle song, New Kid in Town, and then some other artists like uh, Ry Cooter, anything from like the uh, Paradise and Lunch album or like Chicken Skin Music, um, early Jackson Brown, and then, you know, like, early Warren Zevon as well, like particularly the song Carmelita. Um, just to kind of have that Tex-Mex vibe with, um, you know, just it, it, it spills over into, you know, the music scene in LA and just, um, it's just a blend of cultures that, that just always kind of makes the best kind of gumbo or soup for uh, combining rock and roll Americana and traditional, you know, Mexican music, it's, it's awesome. So the cast of players on the song, um, obviously we had Scott Underwood play drums, he produced the record. For those of you who don't know, Scott uh, was a founding member and original drummer in the band Train. Um, we've been really, really good friends for a long time now and done a lot of session work together. And my last album, um, we wrote two songs together and we just figured it was time to do an album together. And so uh, he laid down the drums. My good buddy Christian Wood played upright bass on this song. Um, we've done a lot of touring together and recording. He also is a big session guy in town. And then we had Jimmy Wallace play organ and Fender Rhodes on this when he's not doing session work in town. He is Joe Walsh's keyboard player and also plays keyboards for the Wallflowers. Um, Tim Jones, who I wrote the song with, ended up coming in to do harmonies on it. And uh, we weren't sure what we were gonna have him sing, so we ended up having him do a complete pass of the song. And we thought it just had such a cool vibe that uh, we kept it. And it's a really cool moment on the album. It's the only time where we have harmonies do the entire song. And you know, Tim, aside from being a really, really good friend, he has just one of my favorite voices um, ever since I first heard his voice and particularly for his harmonies um, he's just got that like high chest harmony and it just totally rounded off the song um, going into it we were also not sure if we were gonna add um, accordion or like trumpet we knew we wanted to have like a mediachi kind of vibe um, and so we just had a problem trying to find a player and so one of the other uh, serendipitous things about when we recorded this album was um, we were trying to find a horn player we are kind of striking out and um, almost the end of our, our tenure at Blackbird before we were going to go to Scott's studio um, and do all the overdubs uh, John McBride who's the owner of Blackbird called Scott and was letting him know that uh, if we needed a horn player as soon as we got out of the studio the Mavericks were coming in to use Studio A and Julio Diaz is the main horn player in the Mavericks and he always fits in extra studio work anytime he comes up to Nashville. 
and John let us know that he'd be available. So we called Julio and he came over to Scott's studio in East Nashville and you know within like 30 minutes had the horn parts tracked and just such an amazing human being. Um, we had such a good time with him and just such an insanely talented musician. Um, Julio is actually from Cuba originally and uh, immigrated to Miami on a full scholarship through Arturo Sandoval. So if you, if you haven't heard of Arturo Sandoval, he's just a monumental jazz trumpet player and keyboard player as well. I mean, he's equally as good on piano as he is on trumpet. I've really been fortunate to see him a couple times live and just monumental figure in music. And so Julio um, came over on a scholarship through uh, Arturo and then moved to Los Angeles and studied with him extensively. And you know, the past few years, he's been back in Miami. He runs his own studio, and he also plays in the Mavericks. And uh, it was a really, really, really amazing treat to have him be part of this song. Um, after we put horns down, we wanted some more kind of like really spacey, kind of boozy, beachy textures. So we brought in my buddy Craig Ferguson to play lap steel, and that's like the final texture that you hear on the song. And uh, pretty much aside from that, it's, um, you know, like I said, we recorded all the basic tracks live and it just captured that take, that moment, that essence. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy with it. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you haven't listened to the song yet, please do so. Also check out the music video on my Facebook page or YouTube and keep sharing it. Thanks so much for the love and support and I'll see you guys next time.